Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this Kubernetes series, we are going to talk about a deployment object. Okay, this is a very important object uh, in all the object that we have in the Kubernetes. So in this particular video, we are going to talk about everything about the deployment. So in the earlier video, uh, we talked about the pod, right? So we created a standalone pod, right? So now the problem with the standalone pod is if due to some reason, if uh, it, it gets deleted, it gets deleted due to some reason, that will not be, that will not come back. Okay, that will not come back. Why so? Because that's running in a standalone mode. That means there is a no high availability to your application if you run it as a standalone pod. Right now, to provide the high availability to your application, uh, Kubernetes suggests to use the deployment object. Right, Kubernetes suggests to use a deployment object. Now, what different differently happens in the deployment object? So, basically, what happens when we create a deployment object? First of all, under that deployment object, a replica set object gets created. Okay, it's basically a replica set controller object gets created. Okay, and under this replica set controller object, the pod gets created, right? And in the deployment object, we have a provision to provide the number of replicas of our pod, right? Number of replicas to our pod. Now, how to choose the number of replicas? Uh, basically, that's depending on the traffic. Like, for example, you have a, let's say, a UI application. Let's say you are using a Flipkart UI. Okay, you are developing a Flipkart UI. Now, how many uh, the UI microservice you need to deploy as a pod that you can def uh, decide uh, based on the, the traffic, right? For example, let's say uh, you are getting a 200 request per second okay that's that's the an average traffic you are getting right now uh, but but uh, as a standard okay if you run one instance of a ui microservice what happens is it can hand, uh, handle 100 request per second that's the standard of application right if uh, we start getting more than 100 requests per second then your application may not respond uh, as expected, right? So if you are getting a 200 request, it is recommended that you create two instances of your microservice, okay? You create two instances of microservice and put it behind the load balancer so that whenever a requests are coming, right? What will happen is this load balancer will distribute the request, maybe 100 requests to this instance, and 100 requests to this instance, right? So this way, depending on how much traffic you are give, getting to your application, you can decide how many replicas we require, right? So the way we decided, like for 200 requests, we decided that we needed two replicas, right? Because the application capacity is 100, uh, capacity to process is 100 requests per second, right? So depending on your traffic, depending on the capacity of your application, you can decide how many replicas we require, right? So that will be controlled by this replica set controller, okay? Which will make sure that the desired and the current count is matching, okay? So here desired, let's say you are giving two replica. So desired count is two. And what is the current count? Okay, that is something I'll talk about it, how it will get to know, okay? So if you say two replica, so two pods will be created under this particular replica. Okay, and now it's the responsibility of this replica set controller to make sure these two pods are running all the time, right? So how it get to know? Basically, a replica set controller continuously uh, keep getting the current status of these pods from the uh, ATCD via API server, okay? And uh, if it checks that, okay, desired count is two, what is the current status of these two pods? If it is running perfectly, that's fine, controller will not do anything. It will just keep watching on it. But at any point of time, due to some reason, if any of the pod goes down, what will happen is the desired and current count will not match. Okay, as soon as it doesn't match, 
a replica set controller will inform the API server that, okay, you need to create one more pod for this. And then the process will like, uh, the scheduler will take it up. It will schedule a pod on best node available and it will make sure that then the current count is as expected. And then controller will again keep, will keep a watch, keep a watch and make sure the desired and the current count is matching, right? So this is how basically a deployment object with the help of replica set controller is trying to make sure that uh, your application is getting a high availability, right? So if you have an application and you want that application to be running all the time with a set of replicas, deployment object is the best choice for it, right? So let me just show you practically how exactly we can create a deployment, what all object gets created under it and how it exactly looks like. So let's see this practically, right? So let's go back to the setup. I already have a, a, a Kubernetes cluster created. So if I do kubectl get node, so here you can see I have a three node cluster. It's perfectly running fine. So now instead of running a kubectl every now and then, I'm just creating an alias for a kubectl command. So now from here on, I can simply use the kubectl get node, right? So I don't need to type kubectl as a complete word. Perfect. So uh, let's create a deployment. How to create a deployment? We can use a kubectl create. I'm using an imperative command. Definitely you can write your own complete YAML and uh, uh, you can then apply that YAML as well. That's another option. But yeah, using the imperative command is a standard option. So we will use that. So kubectl create deploy. So here kubectl create is a command. What we want to create, we want to create a deployment. So for a deployment, the short name is deploy. And then what is the deployment name? Let's say I'm giving the name as a my deploy. Okay. And then we can use an image. Okay, let's say I'm using an Nginx image. Okay, let's say Nginx colon latest. This is the image I want to use. So, and this runs on the port 80. Right, so if I just run this, simply it will create one deployment. Under that deployment, it will create a replica set controller. And under that, by default, it will create one replica, right? But if you want to customize this, right? So in that case, instead of directly creating an object, we can use hyphen hyphen dry run option, okay? Uh, we When we say dry run is equal to client, what does it mean? That means instead of sending this request to the API server, run it on the command line itself and give me the output in the YAML format, okay? This is how you can provide. And then we can re redirect this output into the deploy.yaml. So this is how your uh, YAML file or the manifest file gets created. So let me open it. So this is how it will look like, okay? Like you can see the top four object attributes, API version, the kind, what object we are creating. Under metadata, it's more about some information about that object. Under spec, you can see how many replicas. So by default, it will create one replicas. If you want to customize, you can go ahead and just modify. Let's say I want a three replicas. Then the selector section is basically, uh, is for the replica set controller it will understand what all pods I need to manage, okay? You can see this particular section is for the pod where you can see the image we are using, the container name, the port, right? And then in the selector section, you can see the labels, okay? The labels we have here and the labels we have here, this should be matching. From that, it will understand that, okay, I need to manage a pod having label app is equal to my deploy, right? From that, it will be able to understand, right? So this is how your deploy.yaml will look like. Let me just save it and let's create it. So if I do kubectl, so from the file, if you want to create an object, so we have to use a kubectl deploy command, right? So let me do kubectl apply hyphen f and give the file name deploy.yaml. So as soon as I run it, you can see it is showing that deployment got created. So let me do kubectl get deploy. And here you can see a deployment got created, right? So right now the it's still not running. It's try It has to first of all, pull the image and create it. That's why it is showing, right? But if you want to see all the stuff together, you can do a kubectl get all. So it will show you all list, all the objects, right? So let's understand. You can see, first of all, a deployment got created, okay? Under this deployment, a replica set controller got created, okay? Just observe the name, okay? The name, how it got created was deployment name hyphen, then the, the some random ID for a uh, replica. So this whole becomes your replica set ID. Okay, and under this replica set, you can see as we have provided three replicas, 
So three pod got created and even you can observe the name of the pod, right? First of all, the deployment name, then the replica set ID and then the pod, right? And now let me just, okay, even you can just get the only the pods as well, right? So if I do kubectl get pod, you can see three pods are running, right? So why we are using a deployment object? Because we want to high availability. So let's try to understand if really we are getting a high availability or not, right? So what I'll do, I'll just try to delete the pods. Let me do this, kubectl delete. So kubectl delete is a command. What do you want to delete? We want to delete a pod. And what is the name of the pod? This one, right? So I'm trying to delete a pod with xf4k5 as the last ID, right? It got created 65 seconds ago. So let me just delete it. You can see it got deleted happily. But if you go back and check the pod, you can see there is a new pod got created just three seconds ago, right? So who is creating? This replica set controller is creating it because we have told the replica set control that I need three replicas to be running all the time. If at any point of time, if any pod goes down, it will recreate a new pod PT. And that's what happened here. As soon as we delete it, a new pod got created. So that this is how your replica set controller will make sure that at any point of time, your pod has three replicas. Even if it gets deleted due to any reason, it will make sure that it will come back, right? And on which node these pods are running, if you want to see, you can use hyphen O wide, right? So if I run it, you can see, out of this three pod, two pods are running on the kind worker two. One pod is running on the kind worker, right? Yeah, so that's how we have seen about how to make your application highly available with this feature. Now, the next concept that we're going to talk about, uh, with this deployment, we have also mechanism to scale up or scale down our application. Now, why this is required scaling up or scaling down your application? Let's understand on the whiteboard. Now, let's say uh, you have the Flipkart UI deployed. You are getting a 200 request right now. So you created a two replicas. Like, for example, a 300 request you are getting. So you created a three replicas and everything is perfectly fine. But now there is a Flipkart sale going to be there. Okay. So obviously, if there is a sale, a lot of users are going to visit your website. So obviously, obviously the load on your website will get increased. Let's say on an average, you're going to get a thousand requests per second in the sale time, right? So obviously if you have only three pods or three replicas are running for that, it's not going to be enough, right? Because you are going to get a thousand requests and at max they can hand handle only the 300 requests. Once request gets increased, obviously your application might get crashed, okay? We have seen, uh, nowadays you must have seen that a lot of applications, if there is a traffic gets increased, they will get crashed, right? A lot of government website you can observe here. If there is any result or something, if a lot of traffic will be there. And obviously, your app, we have seen many times that uh, those applications are getting crashed. So obviously, here also that can happen, right? Because if obviously at a sale time, the traffic will increase and high chances that your application get crashed, right? So to avoid this kind of a situation, in a deployment object, uh, deployment object provides uh, or gives the provision through which you can basically increase the number of replicas. And whenever your sale is over, you can decrease that number of replicas, right? So how to do that? It's a very simple, let's come back here. So for that, what we need to do is we have to use kubectl scale command. What do you want to scale? We want to scale a deployment. And what is the name of the deployment? Name of the deployment is my deploy, right? So I'm just trying to scale it. So here we have to use hyphen hyphen replicas is equal to, let's say I want to scale it to 10. That's it, okay? This is the command we have to use. So as soon as I run it, okay, you can see it got scaled, right? Now it's whether it's really got scaled or not. If you want to see it, you can just do kubectl get all and you will see the changes. Okay, you can see all these numbers got changed from three to 10. Here also you can see desired current got changed to 10. And here you can see earlier, the older pods, you can see five minutes, three minutes, but the extras, another seven pod got created and we have total 10 counts here. We have total 10 counts here, right? So how easily we can scale up our application, right? 
now even if you are getting 1000 request your deployment is capable of handling all those 1000 request right now once your sale is over okay once your sale is over now you are uh, traffic back to the 300 request an average traffic right so you can easily scale down now again for uh, scaling it down it's a command will remain same you have to just change the number okay hyphen hyphen replica is equal to through three so if i run it you can see it is saying got scaled but if you go back and see kubectl get all now you can see the three pods other <coughs> seven pods got terminated and now we have only three pods run right so this is how simply you can scale up our application where whenever required and you can scale down whenever not required so this is basically we call it as a manual scaling right so kubernetes also provides a mechanism to do the auto scaling right now let me tell you uh, what is the drawback of manual scaling okay let's uh, go back to the whiteboard now let's say you have a cluster and in the cluster let's say you have three nodes okay and on the three nodes let's say we have right now three replicas so a pod got created on the three node right and let's say uh, your one pod or one replica is uh, taking let's say one gb of ram okay i'm just giving an example so you are consuming 3 gb right and you are getting 300 requests for now and that's perfectly fine so overall 3 gb uh, compute resources you required okay i'm just talking about the ram okay there are other compute resources as well now even though there is a sale that does not mean that you're going to get that thousand request all the time okay maybe in the evening time you're going to get more traffic because usually people uh basically do the buying at the in the evening right because they have some spare time right in the working hours they hardly go and do that right so obviously the traffic will be at the end of the day and or in the evening right so there is no point in just occupying this one gb uh basically from um three pods if you just scale it to 10 then that means extra 7 gb you are kind of occupying or to whole day right you are trying to occupy whole day right so that basically if you are using a cloud resources so obviously the cost will increase and you have to pay for the cloud or for using that extra 7 gb right but if you have an auto scaling mechanism okay kubernetes uh, basically this deployment object provides an auto scaling mechanism auto scaling mechanism means uh, basically kubernetes provides one object called as a horizontal pod at a scaler that's an object and it runs on the cpu utilization okay it has one criteria it works on the cpu utilization now we know that cpu utilization gets increased if the traffic gets increased or the load on the application gets increased right so with the help of horizontal pod at a scaler what will happen initially let's say you have uh, three pods running behind the load balancer and they are handling the 300 request okay and that's the normal traffic so let's say cpu utilization threshold you have given it as 80 percent right so in a normal scenario if there are 300 requests the normal uh, cpu utilization is 80 percent but as soon as the traffic gets increased 310 320 330 right so obviously the utilization will increase and as soon as the utilization is going above 80 percent this horizontal pod at a scalar will increase one pod so obviously now instead of occupying all 7 gb extra it will just occupy 1 gb extra here right and then what will happen is it will work till 400 request perfectly right again the traffic gets increased utilization will go up so this horizontal pod at a scalar can automatically increase another pod and then that will work fine for uh, other 500 request okay let me go to the whiteboard other okay till it will work perfectly fine till 500 request so this way instead of occupying all this compute resource in, in advance with the help of auto scaling we can basically scale it whenever required scale down whenever not required and this will basically save a lot of our compute resources and overall the cloud cost right so let me just show you how to do that it's a very simple 
So for that, we have to create a horizontal pod at a scalar uh, Kubernetes object. So how to do that? kubectl at a scale. We have an at a scale option. Okay, for a deployment, my deploy. Where you have to provide the minimum and maximum capability. Okay, let's say minimum uh, we want as a three pods. The maximum we want is ten. And the CPU percent right now it works only on the CPU uh, matrix. Okay, so CPU percent I'm giving it as a let's say eighty percent. That's it. that's what we have to do. Let me just run it. You can see that the horizontal pod at a scalar object got created. If I do kubectl get HPA, it will list out that right. Now, if you have okay, right now we don't we are not getting any traffic, the live traffic, right? But as soon as if there is a live traffic coming in, then this horizontal pod at a scalar will become active and it will just start scaling as, as soon as the traffic gets increased. And it will also scale down whenever that traffic gets reduced, right? So this is how uh, simply uh, the deployment object has the capability to scale up and scale down. We can do that manually as well as with the, with the help of this horizontal pod at a scaler, we can uh, do the at a scaling as well, right? So this is about the scaling part. Now the next concept that we are going to see in the deployment is the zero downtime upgrade. This is very important again. So let me go back to the whiteboard and let's talk about the, the zero downtime upgrade. Okay, this is again associated with uh, the deployment. Okay, you can do that for other Kubernetes object as well. But yeah, let's talk about in the context of uh, zero downtime upgrade in the context of deployment. Now, first of all, why we need to upgrade an application, right? So for example, uh, there is a UI team available for Flipkart and they have an initial version of the UI. They, for, from that code, they have created a 1.0 image and that they have deployed. Okay, so right now you are, let's say you have three replicas. So under a deployment, you created a replica set and under that replica set, you have basically uh, three pods running. Okay, and all the these three pods are running with the image 1.0. Okay, all the three pods are running with the 1.0 image. But now your UI team uh, basically uh, used a lot of latest technologies and they have made a uh, Flipkart UI better, right? They did a lot of code changes and they now come up with a 2.0 image, right? Now they want to release the 2.0 image in the production without giving any downtime to the customer, okay? So how we can do this? So for that as well, this deployment object, our Kubernetes provides a mechanism to roll it out this new feature without giving any downtime to the end user, right? Because the end users are basically going to access it, all this uh, means where behind the load balancer, they will try to access the application, right? So how uh, zero downtime upgrade works? Right. So here now the replica set is working. What happens as, as soon as we run the upgrade command under this same deployment, a new replica set gets created. Let's say replica set two. Okay. Under this replica set, first of all, a new pod will get created with a 2.0 image. You can see we are not touching at all anything to the existing stuff. Okay. We are creating a new pod with a 2.0 image. And as soon as it's completely in a running state, what happens automatically? this load balancer will start sending the traffic to this new pod and one of the old pod will be terminated. Now due to this, what will happen? That few users will be able to see new UI, few users will be able to see the old UI. But as an end user perspective, that's perfectly fine because for them, what is required is the, the application availability, okay? Whether that's a new UI or old UI, that really doesn't matter, right? So that's what we can achieve it, okay? So now, first of all, we created a new pod with a 2.0 and we are live now, okay? And we terminated the old one. Now it will create another pod with a 2.0. As soon as it's running, the load balancer will start sending the traffic to this and one of the old pod will be terminated. Again, the new one will be created with a 2.0 image. Once it is running, traffic will be sent there and old will be terminated. And now this new replicas, it will start managing all the new pods 
and this old replica set will have a current and desired count as a zero zero and this new replica set will have a current and desired as three three now you might have a question that okay why we are mentioning this old replica set okay why so because let's say you have another replica set replica set three and you created a 3.0 image okay and with the 3.0 pods are running but now due to some reason once you release it there is something wrong okay some people are facing problem in the new ui okay they, maybe they are not able to do the checkout something is wrong in your uh, release right so you can we have a mechanism to easily roll it roll it back to the previous version let's say 2.0 you can easily roll it back and uh, without affecting much you can easily roll back your application to the previous version and everything will work perfectly okay so this is how your zero downtime upgrade works perfectly fine with this deployment object okay to we can easily roll out our new features without giving any downtime right so let me just quickly show you with the practical how it works let's go back so now if you see okay uh if you see here right now three pods are running and all the pods are basically running with the nginx colon latest image okay if you want to see it you can simply describe the pod so kipctl describe is a command what we want to describe we want to describe a pod and what is the pod name let's say this is our pod name and if i describe you can see all the pods are running with the nginx latest image right but now let's say we have an, another image and we want to release it right so before that, let's uh, understand few commands. Like we have a command kubectl rollout history for the deployment my deployment. So if you see this, basically it will show you the history, right? Because we have just one revision. We have not upgraded an application. So it's just showing, showing a revision one. Right now the change cause is empty. That's the default case. But yeah, if you want to record the change case, change cause, we have a we have to use a hyphen hyphen record option so that I'll, I'll show you in the upgrade then also uh another command we have is rollout status okay that will show you the last rollout status okay you can see the last rollout status is successful so it is just showing that it's a successfully rolled out right perfect so now let's see how you can upgrade so it's a very simple we have to use a command kubectl uh roll out uh, basically qctl set image is a command for the deployment my deploy okay for the deployment my deploy that's something we have to use it what else we need to use it uh we need to use the container name okay what is the container name we have as an nginx and what is the new image we want to use let's say nginx colon 1.8.0 okay this is the image we have already available on the docker hub so i'm just simply providing the name so what we are saying that go and upgrade this deployment to this nginx colon 1.8.0 right now it is running with the nginx colon 1.0 now i am asking to change it to this new version and then if you want to record the change change cost you can use hyphen hyphen record that's it now if i run it you can see a deployment image updated if you go back and see the status you can see a rollout is happening okay you will see the live logs here by in a kubectl rollout status command okay and that's still happening because it has to pull this new image and roll it out that's why it is got stuck but as soon as the image is pulled you'll see the live logs here as well so let's wait for a few seconds and we should be able to see this changes or should see this uh, live logs here right so that will keep happening in the background i'll just stop this and instead of a status i'll show you the history now the revision number got changed right so i'll just show you the history here so here you can see the revision 2 got added and why it changed just because of this command that's what it is showing right? if you go back and do the kubectl get all one more thing you will observe is that a new replica set got created okay so earlier the pods were running with uh okay so here you can see the image pullback error we are getting that means the version that i'm giving the 1.8.0 it's it's not correct right it's not correct that's the reason it's a failing because you can see a new pod got created it's not in a running state so older three all the three pods are perfectly running fine they are not getting impacted so that means our old uh, all the consumers all the all the end users are not getting at all impacted if there is a in a rollout itself if there is a problem it is making sure that 
the existing users or the existing environment is not touched. Okay, perfect. So let me see what is wrong. If you want to see what is wrong, you can just describe the pod. So how to describe? CTL describe the pod and then the pod name. So if I run it, you can see it is giving an image pullback error because it is saying that there is no such, such image with our nginx 1.8.0, right? So if you want to see it, you can just quickly go and uh, go to the uh, Docker hub, hub.docker.com and then search for nginx and you will, see, you will be able to see different versions, right? So I'm just searching an Nginx image. So this is a Nginx image, official image. If I just click on that and you will find multiple tags, but I wanted to specifically check if there is a 1.8.0 tag available. So if I do 1.8. I'm just trying to search it. It's a basically 1.8.1 version available and not the 1.8.0, right? Let me check if there is another available 1.9 dot something. So 1.9 dot. Okay, it's uh, taking some time. Yeah, 1.9 dot. Multiple versions are available. So I wanted to use 1.9 dot one or 1.9 dot zero. Both are available. So that's fine. Let's go back and let's change the image. So we can use the same command kubectl set image. And this time I'll use a 1.8 dot zero. Sorry, 1.8 dot one. So let's run it. This time it should be successful. If I go back and do kubectl get all, you can see a new version got created. Okay, new replica set got created. Under this new replica set, you can see a new pod getting created. As soon as it's running, the one of the old will be terminated and that will keep happening. So let me just running it. You can just keep getting it and you will see, start seeing the differences. Now you can see all the new pods are running. Okay, They got created just seven seconds ago, 20 seconds ago. Now just to validate if it's really happened or not, you can do and check it. Keeps it will describe the pod. And if I describe the pod, now you can see pods are running with 1.8.8. Right? If you go and check the history, so in the history, you can see revision three got added. And if you go and see the status, it's successfully rolled out. right? So let's go back and do one more change. I'm just using kubectl set image command again. And this time I'll set it as a, let's say 1.9.1. .1. So if I do it, what you will see is, you can see the rollout status. The rollout is happening here and you can see the live logs here. So let's wait for it to see all the live logs. So yeah, you can see now we are able to see the live log. Also, if you go back and see the history, you will see a new version got added, revision four got added. And in that revision, we have rolled out 1.9.1. .1. Okay. And also if you go back and see the replica set, you'll observe that a fourth replica set got added and all the pods are running on this fourth replicas, right? Now let's say uh, these are all the versions. Now there is something wrong in the, let's say revision four. So you want to roll it back to the revision three, okay? So we, we have a command to do that, but what will happen is revision three will become revision five because the latest revision should be in a running environment, right? So how to roll it back? It's a very simple kubectl rollout undo command we have, okay? Rollout undo for the deployment my deploy. So this will simply roll it back to the previous revision that is revision three. If you want to roll it back to a specific revision, hyphen hyphen two revision option we have. And you can provide the revision two, revision one, whatever it is, right? So let's say we want to, and right now we want to go for revision three. So let's give it as a three. As soon as we do it, it's saying rolled it back. And if you go back and check it, you will see that pod is switching to the previous version that is 1.8.1, right? So if I go back, let's wait for it to happen completely. Yeah, it's done now. So if I go back and check the log of this particular pod, you will see that it's running on the uh, 1.8.1, so it will describe pod. And here you can see it's running on the 1.8, right? So this is how simply basically you can uh, roll it back to a previous version, okay? And also you can roll out a new feature without giving any downtime to your application, okay? So that's it for this video. I hope everyone understood everything about the deployment object. We have seen everything in a detail with a practical approach. So I hope everyone liked this video. 
If you are not subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe. Uh, thanks for watching. And we will stop here for this particular video. Thanks, everyone.